Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome back. It has been a long time. Uh, like a month. Like a month. Then quite a month it has been. So we are excited to dig into that. A little later in the show, uh, we are going to be talking with Frank Gruber and Jen Consalvo, co-founders and co-CEOs of Established, a consultancy focused on helping organizations with their innovation, startup, and comm strategy. And that's awesome. going to be today on Lifestyle Business with Chris and Anne. We are a little out of practice. Well, we got a new production set up. Uh, Did everyone so check out the scene? The, the graphic on the, on the screen, a uh, new fancy new setup here. Uh, a so little that's fun. freak out, though, because we're now like in different positions yeah. on the screen, but apparently not in post. So and has anybody, anything um, interesting been going on this month? Nothing. Nothing. We've nothing. had nothing going on. I feel like uh, our audience deserves to know, but uh, we have had a lot. <laughs> All righty. Okay. So, uh, so we went on a. The last time we saw you, we had Aaron Thomas of Accelerator for America, a very good friend. We also had Michael Tubbs. Now he had a big month too. He went live with his HBO special. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty exciting for him. Yeah. But and I, then, oh, right. I want to know about what's going on at Launchpad. Right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So we took off. Uh, we went on vacation or a staycation. Um, and we came back to an 8.30 Monday call mid-July. And we had left. Um, I know we had talked about kind of rent is due uh, throughout the basically the spring and talking about kind of how you our members, um, you know, obviously are struggling as a small business. We as a small business have been struggling during COVID. Um, some of the choices that we made were to allow for folks to get relief, to maybe not be so focused on reinforcing that contract we have, but rather thinking a little bit about kind of what do we want to do uh, when we come out of this phase? And I think our goal was to come out of COVID um, creating more fans uh, than foes. And so the idea was we gave kind of about $100,000 in relief over the course of the summer, so of the spring. So it was a little bit uh, challenging for us to make ends meet, obviously. Um, and as a result, we asked our landlords uh, to work with us. We're kind of in business with our landlords. Yeah. I mean, no one really wants to be a landlord right now. Um, so most of them were like, yes, we'll help you. Rent is still due, but we're okay if it's a little late. Um, and that was a great, great plan. And uh, it worked with a couple of them. Uh, unfortunately, we got back from our vacation. Do you want to mm -hmm. help me out here? I'm rambling. It's an awkward conversation. Well, we got back from our vacation and we were informed that we were uh, going to be shutting down Yeah, um, in Memphis and New Orleans um, so. on an 8.30 Monday morning call. Uh, always fun. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, we're, we're mincing words here uh, because we're under a non-disparagement agreement. So we'll we'll leave it at that. That um, We are just honestly, this is so awkward. Um, Jen and Frank, I'm sure you're enjoying watching this well, <laughs> unfold before your very eyes. Look, uh, it's not. We, we don't have to give the narrative here. The it's it, the bottom line is um, uh, we have shut down the uh, Memphis and the New Orleans Launchpad locations, uh, which is very sad for us. Um, the New Orleans location uh, is where we started and uh, operated for over ten years. Uh, this is literally our headquarters, um, and we're out. Uh, so it sucks, and um, it's we're a victim of uh, what many many other small businesses and startups are going through right now. Uh, we've been talking about that on a weekly basis, so people have been you know experiencing this with us in real time. Uh, we're obviously conscious that we're not the only ones struggling, as you said. We um, part of the reason we are struggling is because our members are struggling. A lot of people are struggling during this time, uh, and it's a it's a whole food chain, right? Our, our our landlords are feeling it, and you know the 
ultimately Goldman Sachs and everybody else is going to be feeling it. Um, but, uh, but the bottom line for us is it is um, heartbreaking for us to close our doors in those markets. Um, uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, you can throw them into the chat. We'll do our best to answer them without uh, any hint of disparagement. <laughs> um, but, uh, but anyway, um, will we be back? Who knows? Um, we certainly can be. Uh, <laughs> we can open back up tomorrow if we want to. Uh, maybe it's prudent to wait till COVID's over. I think so. Um, but uh, I think, you know, on, on one bright note that, that I want to highlight is um, one of the um, interesting things that we had to balance was while we were going through this, the day after we were informed that we were going to be shutting down in Memphis and New Orleans, uh, we did a press conference to announce our new Mesa location. Uh, and we had uh, senators and mayors and our partners, Caliber, who are awesome in Mesa. Um, and uh, and this project is amazing and super promising. So I think that one of the things here is that um, we've had to make difficult decisions. I, let me frame, reframe that. We've had difficult decisions made for us um, that uh, that obviously are, are, are tough right now, but um, part of that is for the long-term health of the organization and, um, and the mission and, and being able to continue to deliver on that mission uh, and support our members and, um, and, and grow Launchpad for here, from here. So, yeah. um, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it just aligns us even more with the rest of you, which is we're all going through similar challenges. We're going through tough times and in business, you have heartbreaks and you have victories and successes. And we're going to chat a little bit about that with Jen and Frank, um, who are working on their own business and, and doing amazing things and have great stories to share with us. And also what's wonderful is, thank you, Dan, we have had this outpouring of love and support from our communities and our members and all of the different locations. And it makes us more excited than ever to come back. Um, and it gives us a chance to think about how we actually want to come back, you know, and what what is that next incarnation uh, in New Orleans? So we're, stay tuned. We have lots of creative ideas um, and we'll have even more creative ideas now that we've had a significant lift, weight lifted uh, from our shoulders. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I don't know how you're feeling. We were sort of, uh, <laughs> having a healthy dialogue uh, prior to the show. Our, I don't know, tempers have been a little bit short. Uh, it has been <laughs> stressful. We're, we're kind of exhausted uh, because um, it's, been a, it's been a very down month, or July was a down month. I guess it all happened very fast. Um, Thank goodness. I mean, heck, we had, we had one of our former members uh, flame us on, on email this morning. <laughs> I'm like, imagine if you're closing down a, a chicken restaurant, for example. Just as an example. Just as an example, and you had to go out of business, um, and people were replying to your newsletter email with, you know, how dare you send me this newsletter about your show today? I'm sorry, man. You didn't even communicate that Clean you up were. Our oh my goodness! List. So um, we're very, very sorry. So anyway, uh, especially to that member. Yeah. Um, yeah. about the email. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, you're right, Paul. When this first started, we were thinking six weeks. Now uh, we're thinking one or two years. And uh, yeah, so it, it is what it is. Um, it, it is. Yeah, it looks like we're going into the fall. Um, we'll see. We'll see where we go from here. Actually, we'll let's, we'll bring in uh, Frank and Jen and, I think so. and get their get their let's thoughts. Get their on thoughts. That, always... They're doing some cool stuff. Um, they are in the they a lot of their work is in the events business. Yeah. And actually, one thing I will say is what a treat. Uh, so much of the photography that we have. So. You know, now as we've closed those locations, I look back and I think, thank goodness I have all these amazing events and memories and photography that we can, that will stand the test of time. And one of yeah. the exciting events that we did was startup of the year last um, October. Was that October? Wow. 
And I think that was the last sort of big event we attended and it was a great success. And they did a ton of stuff at our Memphis location. So glad we got that out of the way and you didn't save it for this year. (laughs) And um, let's bring Frank and Jen on. We're just rambling. We usually have a better start show guys, but uh, awkward conversations make for awkward intros. So Frank (laughs) wears many hats, entrepreneur, author, journalist, podcaster, investor. And Jen Consalvo is a founder and leader of multiple successful businesses, entrepreneur, early stage startup investor, and advisor. Together, they are the co-founders and co-CEOs of Established. With many founder feathers in their collective caps, they're here today to talk about the ways that they're leveraging decades of experience in the tech and startup world to help clients further build their brands and realize their most important goals in a time of COVID. Hey guys! Hey Frank! Hey. We'll we, we, lost, we lost one along the way. Sorry about that. We, um, oh, Jen, we went Jen too actually, long. No, no, no. Jen had something pop <laughs> up that literally she had to do. As you see, things happen sometimes. And she was here, you saw her, and then she wasn't. So she's handling a situation. So uh, sorry that she couldn't be here. No yeah. worries. Sorry about your situation. How are you? No, it's, it's all good. It's a good situation. Things happen <laughs> though when you're, you know, you know, things arise when you're running a business. And so she had to pop in and, and take her take a different call, unfortunately. So apologize oh. for her not being here, but I'm here and I'm happy to talk about whatever yeah. you want. Yeah, so. it's, a, it's great to see you. Um, obviously, uh, we've had an eventful month. Um, yeah, sounds like <laughs> Wow. Yeah, we're still here. Um, <laughs> So Frank, why don't you tell us a little bit about start of the year? Uh, you guys yeah. have an upcoming deadline on the tenth. Um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about where you're at, um, what start of the year is, and how people can get involved. Sure. So the company that we so I'll just kind of dial it back. So for the last decade or so, I've been working in in the tech space. We had a company called Tech.co, which is a media company. We sold it in 2018. Um, the media portion of it, and they continue to, to run it. Go check it out at tech.co. It's still out there and they're growing it. But Jen and I took kind of a step back and said, what do we want to do? And we decided we still love the startup component of what we're, of what we were doing. And, um, and so we decided to keep, keep going. And so we started a company called Established, and it's a consultancy, and we work with a lot of different groups to help with their innovation programs and strategies. We do startup sourcing um, for, for clients like um, AppWorks, which is the US Air Force, um, NASA, iTech. Um, and others, and we continue to kind of help them with their strategy of how they can find and connect with startups that can help them with their next missions, which uh, is pretty cool. And then our our own program is called Startup of the Year, which you guys have been a part of now for a while, and we got a chance to do it in person, which who would have thought that was our last time of doing it in person? <laughs> like, hopefully not, but you know, in, in yeah. Memphis, it's crazy, right, to think about it. It gives me chills a little bit. That might have been our last big event in person, but um, we're, we've had quickly adapted uh, to do things online, like as of you as you guys have as well. And uh, we've been producing online uh, pitch competitions for Start of the Year, as well as others. Uh, last week, we hosted and produced the um, Greater Colorado Venture Fund uh, event, which was basically going to be a, a roadshow similar to Rise of the Rest, where they toured around rural Colorado and did seven different pitch competitions and then rolled it up to one. And uh, we took it and created a, a really amazing show for them in about an hour and a half with seven companies instead and that was last thursday and they gave away almost six hundred thousand dollars in investment so yeah we produced all that behind the scenes <laughs> i saw that that's so cool yeah. um we've got some uh mutual friends i'm sure in the rural colorado mm-hmm. investment yep. region and yep. uh rural is so hot right now sure is yeah it definitely is and obviously being able to do things online um helps connect them and the audience you know for doing it online was way bigger than it would have been in person right so it yeah. actually created an opportunity for the companies that all pitched and they all did an amazing job um, pitching and, sh- and showcasing what they're doing. And so that's just kind of what we do. And then, you know, we have our startup habit, which is start of the year, which is this year long program that we, you know, have a bunch of, a bunch of different events. We create a lot of online events um, now that we're, we're, we're standing up. Our, our next one is actually coming up um, soon in September, but you know, we've got a deadline coming up for black founders. So if there's any black founders out there that want to apply, apply now, go to startupofyear.com and, and apply for that um, that upcoming event. And then our bigger call out is actually uh, September 15th for the bigger startup of the year. Um, but if you go into the, the Black Founder event and win it, you get fast tracks to the finals, which is 100 oh. companies competing for investment and exposure and opportunity. So, um, so it'll be 100 companies competing. We're doing a virtual summit in November. Um, so unfortunately, you can't obviously do a real life in-person event, 
Um, and I don't think anybody is right now. So we're bringing it online November 9th and 10th, and we'll be hosting um, that similar to this. <laughs> so we'll be here. It might even look similar. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you yeah. got to check out all the services. So that's that's right. awesome to hear. Yeah. So the, and yeah. so the Black Founders, the deadline was that uh, August 10th? Did I see? Uh, so that yeah. So we extended it. It was the sixth, and we've got a couple more days. So if there's companies that um, are interested, definitely have them apply, even if okay. it says past the deadline, because we may not have tweaked all the language everywhere for we. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. That's awesome. Um, real quick question on that. So we do certainly have lots of founders in our network. What What's an ideal profile uh, sure. for startup of the year? Yeah, so it's um, early stage companies, uh, less than a few, you know, three or four years old. We've got our stuff on our site, but um, and they've changed it. So this is a good test for me. <laughs> but it, it's under five million in, in investment. Um, so you're thinking about early stage, you know, probably maybe took a little bit of money or maybe haven't taken any money. We get a lot, a lot of both. And um, we're trying to give them additional exposure to investors. So um, investors and, you know, potentially even clients, um, of course, you know, if they get a big contract with, whether, let's say, the Air Force or NASA or a big corporate, that could be as good as, as getting an investment, you know, check or whatever. So um, last year we had similar stuff in Memphis, but like FedEx was in, involved and, and others that were right there um, trying to build, build those bridges with the startup community. So we kind of see established as a company that helps provide startup opportunities. That's really, that's what we do. And we do it on both sides, like kind of a two, two headed uh, way of doing it with working with the, the companies that are trying to find the, find the uh, startups and the, the startups that are trying to find the opportunities. We're getting a lot of excited people asking for the link here in the comments. So sure. um, a quick, uh, yeah, let me, let me I'll post it. It. yeah, yeah, definitely. Let me just see if I can find it really quick. This is the best part about the, the internet. Ariel, Ariel, if you can post that, uh, and then we'll show uh, we'll show the link. But um, that's great. We're getting we're getting some uh, interest. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah. I think the best way to do it is just go to startupofyear.com, and it's it's right on the homepage. There's a bunch of information about the program and the extension for that uh, application. There yeah. you go. We're good. All right. Yeah. Great. Yep. There you uh -huh. go. Well, let us know. And uh, yeah, any and members, if you apply. OMNO uh, group and Terrence, uh, thank you guys for your comments and uh, your engagement on this. Um, yeah. That's, that's exciting. We'd, yeah. Love, we'd love to come to NOLA in Memphis and just give away 600 grand. Do you have some of that <laughs> lying around there? <laughs> <laughs> we um, we don't, but that, that was through Greater Colorado. But we are giving away, um, we are not giving away, we're actually investing in some of the companies. We started a, a couple different SPVs, uh, yep. special vehicles for start of the year. And so we're on our second one, and we closed out a few months closed that out a few months ago during the right at the end at the beginning of the pandemic, and um, thankfully you know closed it out. And then uh, we've been just doing um, just you know 10k 10k investments at, at the moment. We, we've got a couple that have been a little bit bigger. And I apologize. There's a fly. Can you see it in the screen? There's a fly flying around. He was oh, trying to be on camera. Um, live TV, best thing ever. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So, but yeah. So we're basically doing. We've got enough to kind of, you know, get out, get through 2021, and then our goal is to kind of raise more and, and do more. So, um, that's kind of been our our kind of progression, I guess you could say, over the last few years. But um, we have some invested in uh, a number of, of founders already, and some great black founders. Um, Shearshare was a winner of our start of the year a few years ago, uh, mm -hmm. and you know they were they were a um, a marketplace or an app for um, taking your uh, your excess salon space and allowing folks to, to yep. use it. And um, they've grown and done a really good job. And obviously was, we're hit pretty hard with COVID stuff, right? You can't, a lot of the salons were closed, but they ended up jumping in and actually helping a lot of the, the salons get their, their checks from the government from, you know, the, all the, the loans. Oh. And aid. So yeah, so they, they kind of jumped in and kind of helped others and, and, uh, and helped kind of their, their community, if you will, uh, keep that going. So, uh, I think they're going to bounce back once things, you know, they're open up a little bit. I don't know. I haven't got a haircut in a while, but I know people are. Yeah. yeah are I mean, you doing your own or are you just I'm doing my own? Yeah, I'm doing my own. I, um, <laughs> I, I did it a couple of weeks ago. I probably need a, a cleanup right now, but the scariest part is the scissors. You know, I can do all this, but then the scissors part is, a, it's a little tedious. It takes a little yeah. while. Yeah. 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 And, and that's a good point just to uh, mention. Well, good point about the, the scissors. No, the, the <laughs> don't run with them. That's dangerous. <laughs> Yeah. The PPP loans, like if, for companies that haven't applied for that, there's still funds available. Still funds out available. There. So right. uh, anybody that has not applied, right? Uh, and and you know, several months ago as we were doing these shows, it was all about how difficult it was to 
get in the queue and everything. And you know, here it is. We've if you've waited all this time, uh, the queue Easy is peasy. eased up. So it's kind of like going yeah. to a hot club. When yeah, it first yeah. opens, it's hard to get in, but then once it stops being hot, yeah, they offered more. And I think that's one of the things that we noticed is that people were getting denied on the first try because it you know came in kind of chunks or whatever, and so they get denied on the first try, but they get it in the second try. And I think that's where you know we've been advising people to also reapply, you know, or and get through that process again. And and it may be. We even found that certain banks are, are able to execute faster than other banks. Yeah. Um, and so even some of the larger banks were telling us, you know, have people do the smaller banks and get those, you know, get those done uh, and they'll be able to get it to you quicker. And it actually ended up being the case. So um, lots of little hacks here and there to, to help um, companies uh, get through it. So, uh, Frank, a conversation you and I had uh, months ago. Um, and we had a, we were chatting about, I don't know when it was actually now that I think back, but we were having a conversation around investment into what, what we call momentum markets, what other people call the rest, right. um, what you guys call America. Um, right. we've been, we were talking about kind of the natural inclinations there. And it is true. You mentioned to me that you often take flyers before most others uh, in the companies. And something that we've been chatting about here has been this idea of more inclusive investment and how yeah. the bar is so, it's almost like so high if you're in kind of a rural or non-major market that yeah. it actually is really under founder friendly. So can you tell us a little bit about your philosophy around how you invest in companies? Yeah, I mean, we've, for a long time, I mean, dating back even to when I started Tech Cocktail, like that, that was our first company that turned into Techco. Uh, it started as a very simple grassroots thing that was really about amplifying what was happening in those local communities. And it uh, started in Chicago and then went to DC and Boston. And we were first to kind of do it in Boulder with Techstars and they were just launching. So we kind of had this right formula at the right time and, and kind of did lots of events to bring communities together. And obviously now, you know, um, that's, that would never work, right? So unless you were doing it online, but um, so timing's everything. That's, that's the story there. But uh, the idea is that we were always about, you know, those underdog markets, um, you know, obviously still working in San Francisco, we both, both Jen and myself both worked at AOL and we had teams in San Francisco and we actually spent a lot of time in Mountain View and, and in DC and, and New York. And so those markets are obviously important. There's a lot there. These other markets, there's still stuff there, but you know, they're having, they don't have the connective tissue necessarily to kind of bridge the gap and find those investors. And so what, what we were, we've always been really um, inclusive in trying to help um, shine a light on these companies and get them a chance, um, whether through, through the events we host, through the, the opportunities we, we provide and, and the connections we make. And, you know, so for, and from an investment perspective, yes, we've, I mean, ShareShare is based in McKinney, Texas, um, not a place that you're like constantly looking for stars, but they are, that's where they're based, you know, so it can happen anywhere, right? So, um, you know, we got, we try to be really um, open and, and part of the start of the year has always, you know, been trying to find companies everywhere. Uh, it's, that's kind of an underlying theme. We, we this year we're, we're pushing ourselves to try to get, try to get one from every state. You know that's that's hap that hasn't happened before. It's hard in certain states, um, especially the rural states, to find um, companies that meet the criteria or that want to participate. Um, we might get them to apply, but they may not actually you know be able to um, you know may not may not make it to the semifinals or whatever just right. because yeah. of what they're doing. Um, but yeah, so definitely um, it's definitely our own team challenge. We always try to find interesting companies everywhere, uh, and then you know from a from an inclusion perspective, we also have been really focused on female-led companies for a long time, and women-led, you know, obviously women-led companies, but also, um, you know, both black and Latina companies, uh, Latino companies as well. I mean, we're really trying to find and an kind of level that playing field um, that you know it shouldn't be unlevel to begin with. So yeah. that's just the way that the way of the world, unfortunately, and so we're trying to help. Yeah, I feel like that's something that we share in common. Is that yeah. fight against leveling the playing field for anyone? Yeah. Um, I'm curious, Frank, you, you guys obviously have, have been doing a, a lot of events uh, mm -hmm. over the years from, you know, Tech, tech Cocktail and Techco into yeah. established and startup of the year. Um, yeah. What do you think uh, are going to be the lasting changes that come out of this new, this COVID time? You know, I think we're all eager to get back and, and, and be with each other in person. Um, but there has been a lot of adoption of technology and streaming and, you know, virtual um, and how, and they can augment each other. So what do, what do you, what do you think will be sort of the lasting ramifications of, 
of this, um, you know, in things like, you know, startup competitions, pitch competitions, things that you're looking for distribution on, you want to build an audience around um, what will be that hybrid sort of in-person and virtual balance? That's a great question. And I think what we're going to see is the flip of what was happening before. So we, we saw a lot of in-person and maybe not so much online. And now I think people are going to build things for online first and then maybe offer a small audience, right? So that yeah. way, because you can actually reach a bigger audience. It's just the internet is the internet. <laughs> like it's amazing, right? right? Yeah. It's the world wide web. Yeah. yeah, right. So you can you have this, you have more potential to, to reach more people and on their schedules, right? So I think that's the difference. Whereas, uh, and we're finding that with, with the th things we're doing. I mean, we, we were gonna do a, a South by, big South by Southwest event. It would have been our 10th year in a row, I believe. And yeah. obviously pulled the plug on that right before they canceled South by Southwest. We, we took that and turned it into an online competition um, where, you know, the company that won was called Genie out of DC. And uh, we ended up investing in them uh, as well in the latest round. And so the idea there, though, is we actually had more audience at the online component that we did versus what we would have had at South by. And you know South by. South by is huge, right? You're going to have yeah. a lot of people through, but you're just able to reach more people um, in a better way and faster. So um, so I think it's gonna that's going to be one of them. Um, I don't know. I just I don't know when it's, there's going to be. I don't know what the right timing is is for having that that uh, that in person event yet. It, it's you know I don't think anyone knows. So I think that's kind of um, TBD. But um, I definitely feel like everything's going to be built for what we're doing now because we've seen the capability, right. and we kind of I kind of like being able to jump in and out of stuff. I mean, I don't yeah, know, inherently, I think everyone's a little bit like without jumping on a flight, right? Yeah. You're sort of in different. And and where where are you? Are you guys in Maine right now? I know yeah. you're multiple Southern places, Maine, yeah. but you've been in Maine most of this. Okay, so we're in in Sonoma, Sonoma um, you know, about an hour and a half north of San Francisco. One of the things yeah. we're actually thinking about doing is building a studio up here that is we're in a co-working space right now, but actually a studio where we can get people to drive up from the Bay Area, come up, do an interview with us, you know, do something like that where we can really get quality content, interesting people, uh, yeah. and, and reach a wider audience by, you know, then it was always, you know, it's always a challenge to get somebody to fly from the Bay Area to, 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 to New Orleans or Memphis or whatever to do a keynote. Um, right. So we're, we're yeah, well, we're, even we're just sort of getting people to thing. engage online with the community, right? Like right. <laughs> asking you to fly to one of our locations to do a town hall is a big ask, right? But asking someone to, to pop on for an hour is, yeah. is actually pretty easy. I, I don't think you're gonna see that again. Like, are we gonna be able to get people to fly, fly to do stuff anymore? <laughs> I think it's, <laughs> it, we've all, like I said, we were kind of have this inherent kind of like laziness and time management thing. So I don't think it's gonna be really hard. I think there's only gonna be a few big things that happen that people are gonna jump on a plane for um, if, the, you know, if things get cleared up. I also think even th rethinking what the in-person experience looks like, right? Which is, do, do you have a desire to go to South by Southwest anytime soon? Or a no. 50,000 person event where you're like- No, no, I mean, you saw it with, with CES, right? That's a big event they do in Las Vegas. And that's, you know, a hundred and something thousand people, maybe 150,000. And they just pulled the plug and went virtual for the first time. I think that's going to be the trend. I mean, if they're they're willing to do that, and you know, Las Vegas is a big area, but I just don't think we're quite ready for it yet. And I don't. I, the idea that CES had initially they announced they, this is I guess I'm getting at they initially announced we're going to do it this year, and I was like, I started to like beat up because I'm like, do I have to like go to this? Like, because we do do a lot. We've worked a lot with with um, CTA who produces it, and and a lot of the companies that are there and whatnot. So it it did make me have some like a quick you know sweat there for a yeah. second like oh my gosh i'm gonna have to jump on a plane and do this or maybe potentially and so um so I, I think that it was the right move for them to pull it and i think that you'll probably see similar stuff with with um south by and some of these bigger events um you know we just watched um you know you started just getting more comfortable watching things the tough thing is engagement even with with the online component um because they're if you're doing like a multi-day thing you're trying to figure out how do i get engagement throughout the whole thing i mean you're basically doing a telethon at that point right like you're yeah. doing like a potentially a telethon unless you break it into segments and so like um yeah so i think that that's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out um what people have attention for because we're we're constantly like right now just looking at you i have this screen i have this screen i have multi i have like four screens in front of me right now yeah. i'm trying to pay attention to you guys so right. 
you know, so I think that's people are people are like that. They're going to have their meetings. They're going to jump in and out of things versus um, when you're when you get them in an environment like at a like our summit or like these South by or whatever, people are more willing to just be in, in the environment and forget what else has to be done. Basically, I think that that's fair. The intimacy um, of the um, you know sort of uh, the one on one or you know, you see a great pitch, you know, at a startup of the year event and an investor wants to go and, you know, walk up to stage and, and, and grab this person and give them a business card or that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, we all know that when you leave a conference or you leave an event, um, you know, you sort of, you know, time passes, you forget about it. So how do you capture that? Oh, I'm interested right now. Let me make that match. Let me, you know, let me, you know, What's the equivalent of put pressing a business card into somebody's hand um, yeah. in a in a virtual environment like this? I think that's something that, uh, from a technology standpoint, needs to be worked on, and and you know that that creating an action out of out of doing something like we're doing now. Yeah, I think the interesting thing there. That's a great point. I thought that too, and actually, I did attend and participate in like the um, ACA, which is Angel Conference Association or Angel. I don't know what ACA, but it's an angel conference. It's an angel investor conference um, called ACA. Anyway, yeah. um, they, and, and I've been on a couple others where you actually are quicker to connect in some ways. Like if you get some of those mingle rooms and things you can jump in. So they're literally like um, you're jumping in with some random people and talking to them. Or even if you've been a, attended a, like a, a happy hour, right? if you've done a virtual happy hour recently, um, <laughs> you're able to like, or maybe it's just me and I'm super creepy. I'm able to look up everyone who what they're doing on like LinkedIn and be like, oh, that's who they are. And then you get a little bit better and faster connection. And then after you're done, you can actually go and connect with them way faster than if you had a business card. Because sometimes those business cards, they just they get in my wallet and they just stack up in here. And soon enough, I've got the George Costanza and I'm like <laughs> wallet and I'm just sitting here with this wallet right. and it, you know, sticking out. And so I think and, and then and then you got to make an action upon that. So I guess in some ways it's it can be easier and faster because it's the internet and you know it's, it's digital versus having to like think about when you're going to do that or whatever so yeah yeah interesting i know we will see but i i do think that there's going to be a lot less flying uh people are going to be more resistant to travel unless it's something you know you'll you'll pick and choose but you won't just be yeah. like yeah i'll go to every opportunity zone event across the whole country oh, opportunity zone events are canceled <laughs> are they? Will, unless it's at the white house we will come to start up for the year though yeah, yeah, it'll be online. It'll be November 9th and 10th. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it might be in the same background and everything you're in right now. Right? Exactly. I can't wait. Right. I can't wait. Yeah. That's yeah. great. That's awesome. um, but I do think it is that is a fair point, which is um, like the whole idea of recreating those intimate connections where people are coming together is really important. But yeah. like, the large scale event. It, there are so many people who are creative who this is a pro that you'll you'll figure out you're going to be the driver of what uh the future looks like in this stuff yeah you miss the the random collisions right like yeah so i lived downtown las vegas before i was in maine and um with downtown project and, which was driven by tony shea and uh, some other folks from from zappos and you know part of that that whole mission was to create a collisionable community and not like you're driving a car and you're going to crash into people, but the ability for you to like bump into people and create that kind of randomness um, that yeah. occurs in, in more dense cities. And so I think that's what you're going to actually miss. And so how do you create that spark and, and create the ability for you to, to, to randomly bump into, you know, your next potential partner or inv investor or whatever um, without, because most, you know, if you're in this environment and you're like in screen land, you know, like it's very easy to hide, right? It's very easy to not put on the camera and not go to these mingle things and just to listen to the summit and, or whatever, and not participate. Um, and so I think it's going to be important to pull those people that are, you know, maybe a little bit more introverted out um, to be a part of these, like some of those and create those random moments. Cause I think that's yeah. what will be, will be missed. Um, and I think that's what makes me a little sad because those are the, some of the best you know moments that can happen. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting and just a, a reflection at one of my favorite events at South by Southwest for, for many, many years were the tech cocktail events, yeah. uh, you know, because it was sort of off. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> it was sort of off campus. So you got, you know, you were in the, you know, seminars or, or the panels or whatever, but it was, you know, yeah. you go and 
He's the only one who went on campus, apparently. (laughs) Grab a beer and hang out. And one of my favorite things to do is always at an event like that, find the one person who's standing in the corner and uh, and walk up to them and like engage in a conversation, like actually yep. go and, and and you usually have a really interesting conversation and it's exactly what you just described. It's somebody who's yep. very interesting, but might be a little introverted and uncomfortable. Yep. Um, right. And, you know, how do we activate that kind of thing in, in more of a virtual world? I was going to straight up say it for both of you, which is, I'm sorry, events even for the extrovert, I yeah. think are more stressful as an extrovert, I can't imagine anything worse than having to go to a networking event where I don't have a platform or someone to talk to. And then having me walk up to you. And then having, no, that would be great. <laughs> would you talk to him? <laughs> no, I mean, that might be why we're married. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it'll be interesting. I was so work. nervous that I was like, someone talk to me. Let's yeah, get I think the, the, bigger stressor, the bigger stressor for, for us, and you guys are our, our parents as well, is like, the whole what are we doing like child care wise that's been the biggest juggle that's why i was trying to you guys invite us to be on this together well obviously that didn't happen could have it almost yeah. did work out in a way but usually it was it's child care right because now yeah. we're juggling what do we do with our little ones when we're not doing this you know when we're doing this what do we do with them and gosh you know there's just not a great setup right now with the current um situation yeah and there's yeah. only so many hours you're comfortable putting them in front of pete the cat <laughs> exactly Pete right. the cat's great he's pretty chill but um but you're right like the screen time has been you're basically fighting against screen time all the time and there's definitely a there's definitely a, um an impact there and then just an impact of what's going on in the world we definitely see it with ours you know our little one and you know definitely feeling the feeling the pressure of what's going on in the world um we're trying to keep it pretty chill but like you can definitely um a lot of anger there so i'm, I'm hoping that everyone can get through it and um you know, in the best way possible. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys are kind of also on the leading of the charge in terms of choose, you get to choose where you live, right? We all get to choose yeah. where we live. I think more and more people are going to choose where they're living. Um, oh, yeah. How are you navigating that in terms of like managing the team and yep. engaging there? I think we're all, let's put it this way. The future of work is remote and it's here. So yeah. what, what are you doing? Well, so we've been remote for a long time, ever since Techco, we had back with Techco, we had a team that was in one place uh, for a little while. But then we started to realize that it's just too hard to wrangle everyone and keep everyone in there. You, you build the best, you know, mousetrap to keep everyone in, in one place. And then somebody's like, well, I want to maybe go over here or whatever. And you want to keep that person. So it's like there's never a good enough mousetrap. Right. So not that you're trying to trap your employees, but, you know, you get the analogy. Yeah. So um, so anyway, we we basically um realized that a while back and decided let's make it remote and and people will just then we can have the kind of the freedom to find the most you know the best people for each thing and then people have the freedom and and we offer that as like an opportunity for for our, our team um to kind of live and work wherever i think it goes back to jen and i always had this dream of you know being digital nomads and going you know being able to live you know do whatever um from wherever now there are connectivity issues that can arise from doing that so we were trying to we had to kind of lay some groundwork around Okay, we're going to be on for most of this time. But you know, we all use communication tools to kind of manage it. But um, that is the biggest one: is making sure everyone is is on good connectivity when they need to be, right? And the rest of the time, you can just kind of do what you need to do to get by. But um, yeah, we've been ahead of it for a while as far as like allowing people to live from everywhere. Partly because selfishly, we didn't we didn't want to be tied down to one spot. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, in in the perfect world, right? Like, and you know, we like I said, we were in Las Vegas last before we were here, and um, we used to jump back and forth. Right. And obviously with what's going on, we're not doing that anymore. But um, unless we want to do a long road trip, <laughs> that's not comfortable. But um, that would be a really, really long road trip with a little one. Um, so anyway, you get you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, we just we allow that way we can kind of pick and choose where our people are. And um, the challenge then is just more of a scheduling time zone thing than it is anything else. Yeah. Yeah. I, hear I mean, that's basically what we always say is we've had to build the muscle of building a culture remote and our business yeah. is remote, so we might as well get good at it and now we're lucky because we yeah. at least seem to be okay yeah it's uh, every you know every good company even with with all that set up still there's going to be flare-ups things are going to happen like you know so i think having that backbone is is super important and and i think the main key is just over communication i mean I think yeah. at the end of the day yeah and so we started doing somewhere it especially with with covid we're like asking people uh, we've done a lot more early on than late, but it's still every every so often we see one happen. But we're asking our employees, hey, if you're you're having a good day, green, green means good, 
yellow, meh, meh, you could do better. If it's a red day, tell everyone and just take some time because you need to take a deep breath and like yeah. whatever's happening because it's not just about what's happening in the world. There's, you know, a lot of other things going on and it all kind of mounts until the point where you, you we don't want anybody um, overcooking here. So trying to make sure that we give everyone space. That's good advice. I'm yeah. having a yellow day. Perfect. And that's making Chris's day a red day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think I'm pretty green today. <laughs> right on, yeah. right on. And I also I agree with you, which is the idea of I mean connectivity. We we are uh, woefully disadvantaged mm -hmm. in our neck of the woods where we live because we don't we have satellite, no. and it's it's, it's right now because it looks pretty good. No, so we have oh. co working space. Okay. Um, which means we have to have full time childcare, which is fantastic. Um, yep. But at the same time. I think that idea of like carving out, here's the windows that everybody needs to be on and then everyone else is more flexible has been useful for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, I think the biggest one is communication. Um, we don't have, our, our child care setup is actually um, Jen's parents who, who help us on two days a week. Today is one of those days. And then the rest is, I had to come up with a schedule for how we actually get stuff done and it's it's pretty much we swap every other day. So yeah, I just handing off right right no so monday is my usually my work day wednesday is jen's work day and then we work tuesday thursdays and then fridays we just juggle so yeah that's that's the screen time day and then we catch up on the weekend so we're <laughs> we're just getting in about 40 hours right now you know just but that's and that's hard um yeah. but i think if we you know the question of are we going to send our little one to school and all that is coming up now and we're like beating up with sweat even though maine is probably one of the best like <laughs> Statistically, places right now, it's still my middle name is Safety, so I'm like a little bit, uh, you know, it's, uncomfortable. But we'll see. It's a lot. It's a lot to figure out what the right answer is to any of this stuff. So yeah, we just don't want anything to happen to either one of us. And obviously, with running the company together, if anything, you know, we bring something home and it knocks us both out for a while, that could really impact us. So yeah. Yeah. Careful. Yeah. Okay. Good thing we only have three locations left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so sorry. That's that's a really crazy story about the locations. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was uh yeah, it was a little bit of a surprise. Sorry. Uh it's it is genuinely really good yeah. to be okay. It, it was, uh, honestly, I mean I feel like yeah, everybody's everybody's faced with challenges and I know yeah. you guys I'm sure have your share of, of crazy moments, but they're all just moments of along yeah. that path, right? And uh, yeah. I think we're 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 really excited about the future, and we'll figure our way back. Well, we're, we're like cockroaches; you can't kill us. As a as <laughs> as, as an investor who called us this morning and and uh, <laughs> to check on us and how we're doing, said uh, <laughs> the only way to make sure you fail is to stop. <laughs> right, that's a good point. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's don't good. give up. Don't keep going. You're obviously going to keep keep turning stuff out, and you'll be fine. Yeah. 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 Um, no, it's it's good. So yeah. we will get there. And, and the landscape's different, though. I mean, I think that's the thing. You're constantly evolving. We talked about our our landscape shifted in March, and we just kept on going and found additional, um, you know, work. Basically, um, yeah. we're helping a lot of different groups now with doing their virtual events and, and and creating these like like Greater Colorado, for example. So that wasn't work at the beginning of the year. We're like, yeah, we're gonna do a lot of online events and help a lot of people do them too. That was not even in question. Like, there was no. Right. Talk of that. So it's all like you no, said about great. adapting. Yeah, yep. love it. Yeah. Um, if you guys are interested in us producing a TV show for you, <laughs> <laughs> for sure, you guys are doing great. How many episodes have you done now? Um, over a hundred. That's what I thought. I thought you said a hundred and something, and I was like, wow, that's that's a lot. Yeah, I don't know if it's been quite that many, but but we were 16? doing it. We've been doing it since twice uh, a week, March. Since March, and wow. we we're doing it every Tuesday, Feels Thursday. Like We've shifted to once a week uh, is a little more sustainable, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's been it, fun. And it's we're been gonna... good. It, it, for us, the biggest thing was, and we've got you know members who are watching and have been commenting and we're grateful for that. It's been a way yeah. to connect with our members and, and as well as a broader audience. But, you know, we were like, okay, we're, we're not going to be able to get, be together in person. You know, how do we, how do we stay connected? How do we, how do we stay helpful? Right. How do we provide resources? Right. How do we, 
do everything that we want to do anyway. Um, yeah, the first ones yeah. were funny. They were all about, we were like small business resource center, PPP loans, the first couple right. were like so serious. And then we were like, maybe people actually need a show. Yeah, so right. Regis and Kathy, this is us. I love it. I love it. It's great. Yeah. And and I like how the comments are flying through here. I didn't realize I just saw that on the screen. That's really cool. I know these are these are good. The uh, I I think you know we, we can't we can't. I, I said it. No, there's no second saying? line for Launchpad. We can't quit Nola. Nola Nola's not quitting us. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll be, be back. back. We'll be back for sure. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's been fun. Um, How's right. everything going on the, on the investment stuff? I mean, you guys yeah. are doing some things around that. And I wanted to hear more about what you're up to. Yeah, we uh, have been, um, you know, slowed a little bit, the oh, investment, no. oh, yeah. making the investments. Um, yeah. Well, I put it this way, the we've been getting updates from our existing portfolio, uh, including some investments that we've been made over the last couple of years in Africa. And these companies are on a tear. So it's it's amazing, yeah. like the you know a, a bunch of up rounds. The companies are doing well, uh, so we're really pleased about that. The um, I'll tell you, fund work is this one's working on it right now. So yeah. how's it going? <laughs> it's a tough time right now to be doing that. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what we're thinking because I uh, we can dig in with you in the future as well, but. Sure. Um, one of the, th we had Mark Moriel on the call, uh, who was former HUD, HUD, right? No, he was yeah. former mayor of New Orleans. Yeah. And, yeah. um, he, uh, we were talking about inclusive financing. And one of the challenges that we've been identifying throughout our network and also broadly is, is that you basically have different choices, which is you have venture capital, um, which we understand all the elements of venture capital and it's great. And that should be, that should exist. And then you yeah. have some fairly uh, restrictive loan type products out there. And so you have debt yeah. financing that are challenging to get and require a lot of either uh, credit worthiness or like the uh, fairly aggressive terms, let's just call it. Yeah. And so I think the, the reality is, is that the existing financial products don't really exist to, and we think about it through the opportunity zone lens, don't really exist to spawn the creation of lots of startups and lots of small businesses because a lot of those businesses would never actually fit into our venture capital mentality. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're not high growth startups. We call them kind of like llama businesses. They're great. Yeah. I love llamas. Yeah, right. They create. They do a lot of work. They don't mm -hmm. have to. The zebra is like this big company that's steady. Yeah. Now these are like lifestyle businesses that create wealth in our communities. Yeah. And the problem is, is that a lot of people have privilege can create themselves a nice lifestyle business, um, mm -hmm. but people without privilege uh, don't have those existing things. And so one of the yeah. things I'm thinking about for the llama fund is the idea that we're going to partner with organizations so large um foundations that have great balance sheet for first uh sort of you know, what's the first word? loss guarantees. first loss guarantees yeah. and then cdfis who have mm -hmm. lots of capital that's coming in um have a need for that to be have some corporate responsibility around it but have mm -hmm. absolutely no ability to understand how to spread that capital around into these organizations and then partner with, say, a company or an organization like, I don't know, Startup of the Year, that might be able to think about how we think about the evolution of spreading that around. Yeah. Um, and so what I'm thinking about doing is, is for our fund, focusing on that. Because yeah. I think there's enough venture capital out there. And I think there is this real big gap in the marketplace for inclusive financing that is pre-seed stage. Um, yeah. And so we would love to collaborate on that in the future, but yeah, that, that's basically that's awesome. where we're, we're, our heads are at and what we've been working on. And it seems to me we're getting a lot of interest from the markets. We're getting a lot of interest from other entrepreneurs. We're getting a lot of interest from the funds. Um, yeah. And so I think that could be a pretty interesting strategy. Really that, interesting. Yeah. It's like we'd be the farm team for a startup of the year. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And one other area that we kind of explored and the greater Colorado is doing this as well, um, is the revenue based stuff, right? So revenue based yeah. investing uh, where you're 
you're giving a little bit better um, setup for companies that may not be, you know, the next zebras or whatever. So, or unicorns or whatever animal you want to use to. Glorify yeah. Them. I feel like revenue based financing is also something interesting there. I yeah, think I mean, you wouldn't do it for all of them because maybe it doesn't make sense. You got to be the right setup to be able to do that um, yeah. for these companies because they may not have revenue, right? These are pre, some of these, some of these really early companies may, may not be set up for it. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, yeah. We've been, it's been hard to catch a breath the last couple of weeks. Just no, I, hear navigating. You. I mean, I'm also really glad that we didn't have like, drink too much wine this week because it feels like we'll go home at the end of the day and be like, oh, let's just open the second bottle and get ourselves fired up about how we're going to deal with this tomorrow. And now we're kind of like embracing a healthy attitude yeah. and a more forward looking approach. So the marathon. <laughs> more on that. Sure. Yeah, no, I hear you. There's, and there's no pressure. It's funny. Like we all have our own pressure like to do this and that. But at the end of the day, it's, um, you know, that's, there's no one holding holding you to do it yet. So I think it's just a matter of figuring It'll out the right time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. I think, um, um, yeah. Yeah, good. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks for asking about what we're up to. Um, okay. and tell Jen, uh, we're sorry we didn't get to catch up, but we'll have you guys on next season of Lifestyle Business in the fall. That sounds great. And we can talk about thank starting you. the year, maybe even showcase some of the companies that you've got. That'd be awesome. That'd cool. be fantastic. And so also mark your calendars now, November 9th and 10th. November 9th and 10th, startup of the year. Maybe we'll see you it. right here. Yeah. Right yeah. here, right here, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. All right, uh, we're gonna let you go, Frank. And, right. Thanks and so much. Thanks everyone. Wrap up. Good, good to be with you. Um, all right, that was awesome. Good to, good to catch up with Man, Frank I know, again. it's good to see our friends. Um, also, just uh, for all the all the viewers and people commenting, this was actually a, a, a pretty fun format to have, uh, have real-time interaction with the audience. Um, obviously, people are watching in a new place on wherever you're watching, Facebook, YouTube, Periscope. Uh, so it uh, has been fun to have that engagement. Of course, um, send feedback. Yeah, send feedback. Uh, Ariel at lp.co. Yeah, sure. Uh, absolutely. Um, anything, uh, any any final thoughts, uh, either from Frank or anything we want to share from the standpoint of the New Orleans and Memphis locations or anything like that? Uh, no, I guess um, we are, uh, I mean, put me on the spot there. Do you have some <laughs> feedback? I guess we'll say... This, which is, we'll be back. We will be back. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's it's tough to say goodbye, and I think the answer is uh, it's not goodbye. Uh, it is. Um, it is. Uh, we will miss you uh, seeing everyone in person uh, for the time being. Um, we will still see you virtually, and hopefully, be showing up in your inboxes and uh and having you join us here uh so thanks to everyone who joined today um and uh yeah and and who knows we'll we'll see maybe we will be back uh when the time is right uh but anyway thanks for everybody for for joining us today uh we've got another show coming up uh tuesday right we're back i think we're coming back tuesday, tuesday. correct me if i'm wrong ariel but we are talking to grady from New Orleans, the greater the GNO, Greater New Orleans Inc. Yeah, about some initiatives they have to put New Orleans on the map. Oh, maybe that will start with a new launch pad location. Yeah, I mean, if he wants, <laughs> I'd say he needs a new launch pad location. Yeah. All right, so long, folks. Thanks for joining, and uh, we will see you next week. <laughs>